Hi there, and welcome to the DynamoDB corner of the AWS YouTube channel. My name is Sean Shriver, and I've been a DynamoDB solutions architect for eight years. My favorite things to do are take photos, play with my cat Brew, and currently talk about AWS SDK timeout settings. Today, we'll be covering quotas for DynamoDB with an emphasis on direct application, so you can use this knowledge immediately. If you're going into production with DynamoDB, you're adding maybe a region to your global table, or simply setting up a new AWS account, this video is for you. We will discover and discuss hard and soft limits, talk about how customers find these limits, a few ways to get them updated, and then we will end with a scenario focused on DynamoDB global tables. By the way, service quotas are often called by their older name service limits, and that's the term I will use throughout this video. Without much ado, let's get going. Not all limits are changeable. Let's start with the most basic of questions. Where are limits set inside of DynamoDB? It's best to think of limits in DynamoDB as either hard or soft, changeable, a soft limit or not changeable, a hard limit. Hard limits are things that in our code are the same for all customers in a region and are generally unchangeable. An example of a hard limit today in Dynamo is the maximum item size, which is currently 400 kilobytes. Soft limits exist in service metadata for your account, which means customers can have different values in their accounts from region to region. In general, soft limits are regional. An example of a soft limit is the max table write capacity, which controls how many provision write units you can have on a single table. That limit is also used in on-demand, but we'll talk about that later. Now, you might be wondering, which limits can we adjust? Now, many limits exist in service metadata and can be changed, and here you see some examples of soft limits in DynamoDB. You can request these be changed one of generally two ways, either through the service quotas console, in the AWS Management Console, or through Support Center in some cases. Often, detailed explanations of how you will use the limits are required. For example, if you request an increase to the maximum number of tables in your accounts, expect many lengthy questions and understand your request may not be granted depending on your plans. Here are some limits that are very familiar to our customers. There is a throughput limit, and this controls the maximum throughput for a table, whether it's an on-demand or provisioned. Then there's the streams write throughput limit. The streams write throughput limit has many names, including a uh, max streams IOPS limit. This controls the maximum write capacity a table with streams enabled can have. And this limit often comes up with global tables. Then there's global secondary indexes. You can have uh, up to 20 GSIs by default, but if you'd like to have that increased, you can. Now, as a solutions architect for Dynamo, I would advise that you maybe take a second look at that because we have things like single table design and index overloading, which allow you to get a lot out of just one index. So hopefully you don't need more than 20. Here are a few examples of hard limits. At first glance, you might assume these are hard limits. L things such as the maximum item size or the size and bytes of a DynamoDB partition key are not changeable by our customers. And these really do seem fundamental to a database, settings that are the same for everyone. Now, how do you know if a limit is soft or hard? I'll give you a tip on this here in a little bit. Now, most limits for DynamoDB are publicly documented. Primarily, they are on our servers quotas page but even then, some customers will hit limits head on by receiving an error from DynamoDB. This can happen due to a number of reasons, including the complexity of the DynamoDB service, inadvertently misreading of or misreading the limits page, or occasionally with new features, customers will discover a limit that's not yet posted to our limits page. We do try to make sure that last situation is a very rare event. Now, an error from DynamoDB API may look something like this. Uh, as you'll see, it says we're unable to add a global table replica because our limits are not set correctly. This specific scenario is more common than you might think, and we will address how to handle this at the end of this presentation. 
Now let's talk about the Quotas page and the DynamoDB developer documentation. The service quoted documentation page for Dynamo is a one-stop shop for the default limits for DynamoDB. Here you will find most limits that apply to the DynamoDB service, including some niche limits, such as the maximum depth of a DynamoDB item's attributes. Um, the answer is 32 levels deep. Um, you know, think of something like a JSON document, uh, which in Dynamo is a map data type, and that can be like 32 levels deep. Um, now, more limits exist here than you'll find in the AWS Management Console for service quotas. And this page is an excellent resource where you can begin your search. You can start by using the find function of your web browser. And I think you should try it. Open up the limits page right now, follow the shortened URL on this page, and search for a keyword such as partition key or update table with no spaces in between the word update and table. Now, remember earlier when I said I would give a tip on how to spot a soft limit, the limits page gives fairly strong indications. If a limit is hard, it will probably be listed briefly with no mention of a quota. However, it can be increased. You will often see the wording here where it explains you can use the service quotas console to request a higher limit. Now, let's take a look at the limits page directly. Let's say I'm wondering if there are any limits on partition keys or sort keys. I can quickly navigate here and find the answer. A partition key's maximum length is two kilobytes. A sort key's maximum length is one kilobyte. Or what if I want to see if there's any limit on how many increment operators I can have in an update expression? I can search for that as well. In this case, I'll, I'll use the find function command F on Mac and I can see the maximum number of operators in an object expression is 300. Now, some of these limits, a subset of the limits appear in the service quotas console. If we go here to the dashboard and we select Amazon DynamoDB, we see as of right now, 13 limits that are available. Um, you can see which of these settings are adjustable, which means they're soft or not hard. For example, the maximum incremental export period window, uh, off the top of my head, not sure what that's for, but uh, is set to what appears to be 24 hours. Now, when you view this page, pay attention to the region name on the top right. This says Northern Virginia. Um, usually limits are regional and you should be aware of where you're requesting a change in the limit. Uh, note that when you're viewing this, you may see more limits in your console than I have at the time of recording. Now, you can select the limit and request an increase, and that often is going to create a support case underneath the surface that is processed automatically. Now, sometimes ADS customer service will manually handle the case, uh, requesting more information. But what if you need to request a limit that is not here? We go back to the limits page, we check out reserve capacity. And let's say I am, uh, I guess a millionaire and I need to buy more than uh, 1 million units of capacity um, for a reservation. Reserve capacity is available in one or three year terms. Um, one year reservations are available in all regions and essentially allow you to prepay for your right usage. Um, it's partial upfront and pay less um, per unit uh, over time. And so if I would need more than 100 units, then I actually have to contact support to have this done because this limit is uh, not here in service quotas. So how do we go about doing that? Um, and the way that we approach this is we use support center. Um, so we click, which one of these is it? This right here, question mark, and then we we'll click on support center. And we want to choose create case and look for this little tiny, little tiny phrase. It says looking for a service code increase. We click that and here's where we can select uh, the type of limit that we need changed. And so I'm going to choose DynamoDB. I'm going to set it as a general question. I, I don't need immediate response. I'm going to request a change to the Northern Virginia region. And uh, for the limit, um, looks like the, even the one I'm looking for isn't on here. Um, so you can just choose one at random, but um, I'm going to request a value of this. And in fact, um, 
I'm going to specifically say, can you increase my provision or my <laughs> reserve capacity purchase limit uh, to 2 million right units, for example. And so that's how you go about doing that. Um, once you fill this out, you can click submit. It will create a case that's sent over to, I believe, AWS customer service. There's a team there that will handle this limit for you. Um, so the ideal way is to go through the service code dashboard, but not all limits are available there. And in the case that that's not possible, uh, we're going to go uh, to support center and create a case. With that, you know how to uh, request a service quota increase or change either directly through the service quota console or through support center to the service quota section. Now this is AWS and as you probably know that AWS management console is backed by a bunch of APIs. So you can inquire about the limits that you saw in service quotas through the AWS CLI. Now here you see an AWS CLI command uh, with the transparency turned on. So you actually see PowerPoint underneath. This is the, the very PowerPoint where this uh, uh, command is going into. And uh, anyways, here you can see my limits for Dynamo DB in this region. I use the, the query option. If you're not familiar with that, it's excellent. It'll let you cut down on the response and uh, filter and select the columns you want to see. In any case, you can, you can use these APIs to service quotas, especially helpful if you have many AWS accounts that you need to manage over time. Now that you know how to request a limit increase in DynamoDB, let's cover a common scenario. Often, customers want to create global tables in new regions, and this is great news, but when customers have non-default limits, they will probably experience an error adding the new region if they're not careful. I showed you an example of this earlier in my account with my very weird limits. Table level write capacity must be the same in each region where the global table will exist. In addition, the max streams IOPS limit, also known as write throughput limit for DynamoDB streams, must be greater than or equal to to the table write capacity and you must set it in each region where the global table will exist. You must request a change to write capacity limits for DynamoDB streams first, however. You must request a change in each region where your global table will exist and only after that limit is increased in your regions will you go and submit a new request to change the table write capacity units if you need to. The order of this process is extremely important and you must follow it. Now, don't forget to adjust your read capacity too so it matches in all regions. Whether you have an on-demand capacity table or you use the provision mode, you don't want to worry later on if your global table will scale for reads in all your regions. Just make the table read capacity limits the same in all regions by including those in your request to update the write capacity. Now, the truth is that even if you follow all of, all of this guidance, it is still possible you may hit another error if your table is very large in terms of the number of partitions or the number of terabytes. While AWS support should identify the issue while processing your service quota increase request, you may need to return and request further changes based on the exception message that you receive. If you can, we recommend you work closely with your AWS account team when it comes to add time when it comes time to add a new region to your global table. Thanks, Sean. That's it. I hope this has been helpful to bring clarity about the DynamoDB service quota process. Over time, we expect to see more service quotas appear in the AWS service quota console. If you have enterprise support, please reach out to your account teams with any questions on service quotas. As always, limits are subject to change and you should always refer to the latest documentation for their current values. Thank you for your time and have a great day.